Good morning, everyone. This week, we will start off our virtual classroom with the memory verse from last week. The passage comes from John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26, and it says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives by believing in me will never die. We learned last week of a story about Lazarus, a brother of Jesus who was not doing well. However, Jesus didn't hurry over but stayed a couple days where he was and then made his way. In the meantime, Lazarus passed away and everyone was sad. When Jesus arrives, he is sad but stays calm and raises Lazarus from the dead. This story reminds us of us. We are all sinful people who are sick and helpless, just like Lazarus. In other words, we are dead in our sins. But just as Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, he raises us from the dead as well. Jesus became sick and suffered death on the cross in our place so that we didn't have to. In return, we get eternal life and access to the Father God. This is amazing news for us because we don't need to do anything but believe in Jesus with all our hearts, soul, and mind. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you first for your Son, Jesus Christ, who came down to earth from heaven for us. We are helpless without you, and we are desperately in need of you to save us. Thank you for keeping your promise and rescuing us from being dead in our sins. We now have life because of Jesus and what he did for us on the cross and giving us new life. We hope that we can turn to your son for help and trust in you. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, as you follow along with me as we go into a time of worship, I want to encourage everyone to sing and to try to do the motions as we worship God. Remember, when we are worshiping God, we are not doing it for ourselves, but we are doing it for our Father God who gave us so much, gave us so much that he was willing and sent his son to die for us on the cross. All right, so let's do worship together. To see you, Jesus, in all your glory, turn my eyes into my heart to sing in wonder of how you love me, to my
pray together the Lord's Prayer. If you don't know it or can't read the words, listen along as we pray together. All right, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, hello! <gasps> Do you hear that? <gasps> Whoa, how exciting! Jesus is in Jerusalem, and we get to celebrate Palm Sunday. Now, before we talk about more about this week, let's get somewhere more safe and quiet. Whew. That's much better. That was a long passage, but awesome job reading it through. The people of Israel knew from a long time ago that there would be a savior, a son of God who would come to Jerusalem and save them. This savior would heal people from their sickness and do many miracles. And so when they heard this good news that this savior was coming to Jerusalem, they shouted and couldn't hide their excitement because they knew that their king and savior was finally here. But the people of Israel and even the disciples didn't really know what all of this meant. Only Jesus would know the sacrifice and the cost it would take to save the people from their sins. Only Jesus would know what he would have to go through on the cross and all the sufferings he would have to take on. And he still obeyed God's will and went into Jerusalem. So why would God send his one and only son? And why would Jesus obey God's command to suffer for his people? Yeah, that's right, because he loves us so much. Let's watch a video that tells us more about how Jesus shows his love to his disciples and how he was going to save the world. The story of Easter, the Last Supper. This is Jesus. hey -o! who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. 
While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. At this time, the Jewish people were celebrating a festival called Passover that had been celebrated since the time of Moses, when God brought his people out of Egypt. So Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate. The disciples asked Jesus where he wanted to eat the Passover meal that night. Jesus said, as you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Hello. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, uh, hi. The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. The disciples found everything to be just as Jesus had said. Later that evening, Jesus arrived with the 12 disciples. They sat down to eat, and Jesus said that he was happy to be with everyone. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. He said, take it, for this is my body, which is given for you. Jesus told them to do this, to help remember him. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And he said to his disciples, This is my blood. It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Jesus said, One of you eating with me here will betray me. He told them that things were supposed to happen this way, but that great sadness would await the one who betrays him. The disciples were very upset and asked, Am I the one? Who is he talking about? Judas asked Jesus, Am I the one? And Jesus said, You have said it. One of the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, who is it? Jesus said it was the one who he would give the bread to. He gave the bread to Judas, and Jesus said, Hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant, so Judas left at once to betray Jesus. Then Jesus comforted and encouraged the disciples. He promised them that they would have a helper come when Jesus was gone. They all sang a song to God together. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate, and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seemed okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said that he would punish Jesus and then release him. Ah! 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 Huh, what? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Whoa, so many things happened in that video, yeah? Let's talk about the Lord's Supper first. Does anyone know what the 
bread and cup are used for. Yeah, awesome. They're used for taking communion or the Lord's Supper. We take communion together to remember and proclaim that Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Just like how Jesus showed his disciples in the video, Jesus took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. So what's so important about the Last Supper? Jesus was just sharing some food and drinks with his disciples, isn't it? No, Jesus was actually showing his disciples how he was going to sacrifice himself on the cross so that whoever believed in this would be saved. Wow. We are only able to do this because Jesus was faithful. Even when Jesus faced the worst day in the history of the world, he never gave up and obeyed God's commands. I want to remind you that there are some sad parts in our Bible, some that are very hard to understand. At the end of Lent, we find ourselves kind of in a difficult place because our scripture story today is sad. Throughout this whole sad day, Jesus has had awful things happen to him. His friends left him alone and some even sold him off for money. And rulers charged him as a criminal, even though he did nothing wrong. But Jesus knew that the only thing he had to fear, the worst thing that could happen to him, was to be cut off from the Father. And then Jesus died. Just like Jesus didn't skip the sad parts of his life, we don't either. Mm. But because of Jesus' death and resurrection, you don't have anything to fear. You see, the Lord's Supper reminds us that Jesus has taken care of our greatest problem, separation from God. Because Jesus obeyed God's commands perfectly, died on the cross for our sins, and then rose again, we get to be with God forever. Yay! We know that next Sunday, we will celebrate the resurrection. Um, we know that Jesus didn't stay in the tomb, but that he rose again victorious. One day, he will return to make the world new again and be with us forever. So until then, we can boldly say, God is always with us. The Lord's Supper reminds us that Jesus is with us always, no matter the sad things that happen in our lives. He loves you so much. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for giving us your words today and for letting us have this time to learn more about you. Thank you for teaching and showing your great love for us and for reminding us that there is nothing to fear. I pray that after this lesson, we would be able to boldly say that you are always with us no matter the sad or scary things that happen in this world. Thank you for watching over us and our families, and I pray that you will continue to do so throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
hope to see you again really soon. Bye.